Hi, my name is Mazda Turel and I'm a neurosurgeon at Wokhart Hospitals, Mumbai Central, as well as an honorary assistant professor at the Sir JJ Group of Hospitals in Grant Medical College, Mumbai. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can prepare for spine surgery. Having the diagnosis of a spine problem that requires surgery can be pretty unnerving. There are a lot of myths about spine surgery, that spine surgery causes permanent paralysis and you'll never be able to walk again and one should never get spine surgery done. It's possible that these myths are related to anecdotal complications that happened due to spine surgery, but spine surgery, in my opinion, is more than 99% safe and effective and the complication rates are less than 1%. Several spine problems can initially be dealt with physiotherapy, medication, sometimes even injections. But when there comes a time when you failed all kinds of conservative treatment, surgery may be the only option to improve quality of life and sometimes even restore function. The common problems that we operate on the spine for are herniated discs or slip discs, degenerative spinal conditions such as lumbar canal stenosis or degenerative lysthesis where one vertebral body slips over another. Then there are infections of the spine, tumors of the spine and then obviously trauma. Whenever you need a spine operation, what we typically do is see patients on an outpatient basis and prepare them for surgery uh, by doing all their preoperative evaluation and imaging and blood work. Patients are typically admitted uh, to the hospital one day prior to the surgery and in the morning of surgery are wheeled into the operating room after they've been checked by the anesthetist. When they're checked by the anesthetist, the anesthesia doctors usually hook them up to the ECG monitors and verify their heart rate and blood pressure. And then usually most back operations happen with patients in the prone position lying on a pair of bolsters on their stomach. Nowadays, we do a lot of surgeries in a minimally invasive fashion, where in which the incisions are just about one inch long. And with the help of tubular retractors, the skin is the only thing we cut, and the rest of the muscles are just dilated and not cut. And what minimally invasive surgery does is it reduces post-operative pain, enhances recovery, reduces blood loss, and patients get back on their feet much sooner. The incisions are really small, they heal much faster, and we are able to achieve the same amount of decompression that you would do with once typically open surgery where a big midline incision is made and all the muscles are separated, a lot of the extra bone is removed, resulting in unnecessary tissue dissection and bony instability. Whether you need instrumentation in the form of screws and rods or plates is entirely an individual case-based discussion and is difficult to generalize. However, even instrumentation can be done now in a minimally invasive fashion. The principles or goals of spine surgery are to provide neural decompression and maintain stability or if unstable, provide stability. Spine operations again usually last for about two or three hours and once surgery is done, patients are typically kept in the recovery for a couple of hours and shifted to the ward. Requirement of an ICU is usually not necessary except in high risk patients. Usually when we operate on the cervical spine in front, I tend to keep all my patients in ICU for 24 hours. Patients are typically mobilized within four to six hours of an operation and started on a normal diet, unnecessary intravenous lines are removed. If patients have had just a single level decompression or a microdiscectomy, they can either go home the evening of the operation or the next day if they don't have any comorbid conditions. Typically patients like to stay for a day or two in the hospital but I'm happy to discharge them on the same day if they feel they're fit and their symptoms have resolved completely. Patients who undergo instrumentation usually stay for three to five days in the hospital. Most often, the sutures we put are subcuticular and we do not need to remove them. They get self-absorbed. We typically see patients back in the outpatient clinic seven to ten days after surgery and then three months later. I hope this explanation puts you at a little ease about spine surgery but if you want to go into the in-depth of your particular problem, you can take a look at my website www.mazdaturel.com and that will provide you with satisfactory explanations of your particular condition and how we are going to deal with it.